Jim and Cindy here from Out of Pocket. We're back for the fourth video installment in our series covering a major power upgrade to our van, the Solus Pocket. The first video was installing the transfer switch. The second video, we switched from a smaller Goal Zero onboard battery to a much larger EcoFlow battery system. And the third video is installing the alternator charger. The final step is to put in a new circuit breaker so that the onboard 12 volt converter is on its own dedicated circuit. That will do inside the electrical panel of the van. Why do we want to do that? Because it's really inefficient <laughs> to go from 12 volt up to 120 volt and back down to 12 volt. You're absolutely right. So on a dedicated circuit breaker, we can shut that off when it's not needed. I also want to show you a weird symptom that we observed, which is this phantom voltage or ghost voltage that we find in the system when the converter is on. So I'll show you that, but in any case, with its own circuit breaker installed, both those problems will be solved. So this video is going to t show you how to install the new circuit breaker to isolate that converter, as well as showing you what some of this phantom voltage looks like. Should be a quick one. It should be. <laughs> let's get it, let's <laughs> let's get it done. To, it. to kick things off, right now we're on shore power, and all the circuit breakers are on, including the 12 volt converter. The air conditioner isn't on, but that doesn't really matter. You can see with our circuit tester, this circuit is working perfectly. So this is with shore power. This is what you'd expect. Now I've unplugged from shore power. You can see the outlets are off. This is the normal behavior of Solus Pocket 36A, our model. When you're not on shore power, you don't have 120 volt. But because we installed the EcoFlow battery system, I can turn on AC power from the batteries, and there you go. Our outlet just lit up. It's live. The lights are all normal. Now the converter is off. Watch what happens when I turn the converter on. See that tiny little red light light up a little bit? It's not really supposed to do that. It's supposed to stay in a state where those two yellow lights are the only lights that are there. So we're going to measure the voltage in this outlet with the converter on, and you'll see that strange ghost voltage we were talking about. I have my handy voltmeter set up. This is set to AC voltage measurement. Put my hot lead in the small vertical one. That's the hot. The large vertical one is the neutral. You can see we're reading 119.5 volts or so. That's exactly what you'd expect from 120 volt power. Now I'm going to measure between the hot lead and the ground. You can see that's reading 63 volts. That is abnormal. If I do the same thing between the neutral vertical and the ground, you get 55 volts, basically the difference between the previous one and 120. This appears to be this ghost voltage phenomenon. And the cause of it, from what I understand, is because we're running off a battery system, that battery system doesn't have a ground that goes to earth, like your normal home power supply does. So it's what's called a floating ground. When you have a floating ground, the neutral and ground are not connected to each other like they normally are in a house circuit. And for some reason, when you're running off this floating ground system and you turn on the converter, these other voltages appear between neutral and ground and hot and ground. It doesn't appear to affect anything we've plugged into the outlets. They all appear to be work fine, uh, appear to work fine. So it's just kind of this ghost voltage that's a little bit weird. But in any case, I want to show you that we'll turn off the converter normally when we power the van this way. So it won't be a problem, but I wanted you to be aware of this um, observation that we made. I have double checked we are unplugged from shore power, and I've double checked that there is no power coming to this from the batteries anymore. I've turned off the feed from the batteries. So I'll take the cover of this off and we'll get into the circuit breaker area. While I do this, I wanted to mention, I did send an email to WFCO. They're the company that makes this panel. And I asked them about this ghost voltage and I got fairly generic response that said, well, if it works when it's plugged into the wall, I guess it works. So they did not really have any information for me to help with that particular issue. So here we go. These are the breakers. This is the 12 volt converter. It's this breaker, one, two, right here, which is where the converter and some outlets both feed into it. So I got a new breaker right here, it's a Siemens, it's exactly the same 
type of model that's in here, there's actually a list of compatible breakers in the manual that comes with the Solus Pocket. So this breaker will be installed under these other ones, just like that, and I'm going to move the converter wire to this new breaker so it'll be isolated on its own circuit. This is the hot wire from the converter right here. The black is the hot wire. Those are the wires that feed into circuit breakers. If I trace that wire, it comes to right there. You can actually see the wire from the converter is joined to another wire before it feeds into the circuit breaker. That's what we need to separate. The other wire seems to come down, go into this cap, and come be connected to a wire that comes from the outlets. So our goal is to pop this thing out, separate those two wires, put one of them back in, and have the converter one go down to its own breaker down below. Okay. Okay. So this thing is really kind of tight in there. Let me pop this one out to move that. This plan appears to just be to cut this right now, so I can get at the couple wires. There. So that one will go back in. This one. It's a converter. This will go into the new one. That wasn't that bad. Okay, this looks like 14 gauge wire coming from the converter. Okay, that was pretty clean. Now, here, maybe I should just take that cap right off. It's not needed anymore. Yeah, that can come right off, I would say. Okay, easy enough. Have these separated, this wire go back into this one by itself. Like that. I'll check the torque on that at the end. So this one will insert back in. Yep. And it's gotta get in a slot in the back. There we go. So that all looks good. Put the air conditioner back in. Easy enough. This one goes into the new one. They really should have done this when they built the van. Another one of those things that, you know, this breaker literally cost $7 at Lowe's. And it really should, would be nice to have that converter on its own. Its own breaker. Okay. Good, about five nanonewton meters. That's more than adequate. They have these little breakout things. You know, there's room for more breakers, as you can see. You just have to open, break these things out. If I can get in there. Huh, there's one. And by way of comparison, these were like doubles. This is a single, so it takes up two slots, even though it's one breaker. No biggie, but... Okay, that's easier. So, I'm sure that's gonna fit. Yeah, it's gonna fit perfectly. It's time to test this. I'm gonna leave the cover off just to make sure I can visually see if anything's weird. Once this is powered up, you don't wanna be sticking your fingers in there. Um, but all the circuit breakers are off. Let's go turn on AC power, 120 volt from the e echo flow. I heard it beep. Double check my green outlet light. It's off, which I expect. Let's turn on the main breaker. 
all good. Turn on the first set of outlets. Green light is on on that first set. Turn on the second set of outlets. Now, third set of outlets. That's this one right here. Perfect. And finally, we have the air conditioner. That doesn't matter. And to verify the same thing, this is the new converter outlet. If I flip that on, we should see the ghost voltage again. Because we're on the battery system. Yep. And there's the converter spinning up. Hear that little clicking sound? And the fan? So that's the 12 volt converter. So in this setup, we're running from the equal flow batteries, providing 120 volt. Then we're converting that back to 12 volt in the converter to charge the house batteries. This is what we don't need to do when we're running on the EcoFlow system. Just turn that off. And now our ghost voltage is gone. This is exactly what we wanted. It's working perfectly. Let's button it up. Okay, there's one last thing we need to do here. We need to relabel these. Okay, no more converter. Converter, actually converter's down here, six to seven. Well, this was a lot easier than any of the other ones. I'm glad this was the last one. Yeah. Having the easy right. one at the end always makes you feel good. Yes. You get the project wrapped up. Yes. Now that this is set up this way, the plan will be if we're on shore power, we want to charge up the house batteries, turn on the converter. When we're not on shore power and we want to power the 120 volt outlets from the EcoFlow, turn off the converter. You don't need it. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question that I'm sure other people have. What if you're powering the batteries off of the solar panels or off of the, uh, the alternator charger? Yeah, all of those sit down close to the house batteries. They're all part of the 12 volt circuit that's all around the house batteries. Solar panel feeds in there, solar charge controller, alternator charger. They're all down at the house battery level. This sits above that between 120 volt and 12 volt. The only time this converter comes into play is when you're plugged in somewhere, either into a wall or have 120 volt coming in from the EcoFlow batteries. That's it. So it doesn't affect any of those other systems at all. Because those are already 12 volt. That's right. All right. I'm really happy with how this whole upgrade came out. <laughs> I am too. This was great. <laughs> yeah. So if you found this video useful, as you know, please feel free to like and subscribe. Till then, we'll see you next time. See you next time.